RuneScape has always had a weird relationship with announcing updates. Some years we had behind the scenes, some years we didn't. Cryptic Twitter hints and detailed dev blogs. We could know everything about an update before it drops, or we could have radio silence. Jagex has tried pretty much every method to hype people up for an update, and today, we're looking at some of the big examples from a very special case. What if Jagex secretly teased an update and said nothing about it? Across RuneScape, strange lights are appearing in certain spots. These will-o'-the-wisps seem to be useless. You can't interact with them, they don't give you gold, and they don't give you XP. However, these are the first example of unannounced phenomena, an in-game hint towards a future update. In this case, the wisps marked the location of fairy rings ahead of the quest they would be released with, a cute, subtle way to pique people's interest ahead of time. But the problem is... 2004 was a very different time. This was the era of finding Peekaboo and Mew 3 in Pokemon, and you could totally fight a level 666 Satan boss in RuneScape if you chopped 30 trees in a specific order. Maybe a few players noticed it and told their friends, but it's not like the majority of players were invested in it. So Jagex took the concept and put it on the shelf, for a time in the future where it might actually work. Hey, what's this on the shelf? Is it footage of the new president, Barack Obama? A news update on swine flu? Or another event from this good year of 2009? No, it's an idea about teasing updates. Oh, don't we have that already? Anyway, go get back to work on that new Penguin Quest, Penguin Quest Maker. Hmm. It's an inspired idea. In May of 2009, players start to notice something weird. Sticking out of the water, you can see a yellow periscope looking out for... something. That's odd. There was nothing in the update or patch notes about this. In fact, how long has it even been here? Players can catch a brief glimpse of the enigma before it swirls around and disappears back into the ocean, leaving the place like it was never there. 2009 is still a far cry from the level of social media we have today, but it's still far more advanced than 2004, and the players go into a frenzy. More reports are coming in from all game worlds and other locations about the Periscope. Forums and fan sites are filled to the brim with people wondering what on earth is going on. What is this Periscope? What's it looking for? In the madness, even the NPCs are starting to get involved. No, seriously, I'm not kidding. In a subsequent postbag from the Hedge, where players can write to in-game characters, Zanik mentions finding a sea monster while out on an adventure, and including a picture of her and the, uh, monster. If you expanded the image, it would say Zanik and Pe, the last word being cut off. Penguins? Periscope? People who need to give this video a like, subscribe and leave a comment down below? Who knows? Well, we know. All the rumors were laid to rest with the release of Hunt for Red Rocktuber, a penguin quest featuring a totally original yellow submarine. And that was that. The teaser had worked wonders and was a great time for everyone involved. So obviously, Jagex wanted to do it again. Towards the end of the year, players started to notice a mysterious NPC appearing near people training Slayer, using spice that on them and then disappearing. No one knew who this was, but they did rock an untrimmed Slayer cape. We now know this NPC as Kura Dahl, a Slayer Master in the ancient caverns, and she also proved to be a popular teaser with the player base. But here's the thing. These teasers were great, and they were popular, but they were also really easy to miss. Sure, you might have heard about them from the forums or a friend, but how many players were missing out on the fun? What if they tried a teaser where everyone was involved? In 10 minutes, with the regular way of smithing, you can make, or at least I could make, 105. Whoa, what the heck? What the heck was that? 
Okay, craziest thing just happened ever. Everybody just jumped up and everybody was all red and crap. At peak time for RuneScape, a 7 second animation of a red power lifting the player into the air hit every player at the same time. And in the chat box, BAM, there it was. A strange power unleashes itself upon you. Even players in Classic received the message although they didn't get an animation to go with it. Not like people played Classic for the animations anyway. After the event, all the players were turned towards a specific spot in the world, and not just in the world in the wilderness. Needless to say, this was legendary. If the forms filled for the periscope incident, then they downright exploded over this one. Everyone wanted to know what the hell they just witnessed and there were absolutely no answers for them. Players quickly realized everyone had faced the wilderness and initially people thought it might have been the wilderness volcano specifically. Players flocked towards the spot to see if they could find anything and grabbed on to the littlest of straws they could find. It was probably the most activity the wilderness had seen since the removal of free trade a few years prior. Players who had been recording at the time, or those with fast trigger fingers on the print screen, captured moments of this event and preserved it forever. Not that anyone had missed it though, right? There was one in-game irregularity however. The Seers of Seers Village all had special dialogue commenting about it. How were they connected? Who else was connected? Did anyone else know? What else had changed in game? It wasn't just the wilderness now. The players would have to go over the entire world with a fine tooth comb in search for answers. But there were none. Player theories ranged from bug to a gesture of solidarity to the Haitian earthquake. The Jmods did step in and debunk both of those in case you were wondering. Other players tried to tack on their own events such as a black hole in Yanil, which a ton of players fell for. The community seems to really love a good hoax, doesn't it? It wasn't until a full month later that players started to piece together the truth, when a mysterious new island appeared on the right side of the wilderness, in the spot where everyone had faced just a month earlier. Really needed a Sherlock for that one, I know. Players still didn't have a reason for it though. And trust me, they were getting desperate. And with only a cryptic tweet this Sunday before, everything started to fall into place with the release of Dungeoneering, the newest skill. Or minigame, depending on who you asked. This strange power was confirmed to be related to the bottom floor of Dommenheim, thanks to veteran player Mod Mark, although it would be a long time until that mystery was finally put to rest. I'm not kidding, it was a whole five years. Turns out the Majorat Bilrock. Bilrush? Bilrash? Bilrosh had killed the last Shalon Ma. Don't worry old school players, I only know half of those words too. I know I've talked a lot about the strange power, but it really can't be understated how much of a big event this was. It captured everyone's imaginations, got the whole community involved, and built up hype like no other for the big release of Dungeoneering. So everyone in Jagex clapped and patted themselves on the back, before celebrating with pizza and champagne. Well done lads, you'd done it. You know not everyone got to see the strange power, right? What do you mean? We had everyone online, right? Yeah, everyone online. Lots of people were asleep. Like Australians, and people we actually want to host good servers for. Ugh, fine. We'll keep that in mind for next time. Next time? A year later, in July, the game world starts to tremble. I know the servers can be shaky at the best of times, but you don't normally see large rocks falling from the sky. With no warning, any NPCs or players underneath them were violently crushed. And by violently crushed, I mean conveniently knocked out of the way. Just like this strange power, the earthquake was heavily discussed on forums and fan sites. And what's more, the rocks stayed in the game. So even if you missed it, you could go and see them. Everyone was happy. Unlike the strange power, however, we did have a few clues ahead of time. Lots of players correctly guessed that it was related to clan citadels which had been teased already. Others thought it might have been tied to an upcoming quest, Ritual of the Majorat. The second theory didn't last long since Modpedal confirmed it was clan citadel related. 
Jagex really did pull out all the stops for clan citadels. I mean, look at the trailer they made for it. News spread of an ancient ruin being unearthed. We worked tirelessly to rebuild the artifact. I stepped forward to find out the truth for myself. They didn't do that for Dungeoneering. And so, another unannounced phenomena had hyped everyone up for a big update, and did its job with flying color. They're complaining again. What? But we gave them what they wanted. They wanted to see the rocks fall, dumbass. Not see the aftermath in-game. It's not like we can do anything about that. The whole point of these is that we can't tell players about it ahead of time. Sure you can. What do you mean, sure we... Sure we can. A timer. See the future, eight days from now. Thanks to the behind the scenes, it wasn't too difficult to guess that this was a teaser for Runespan. But absolutely nobody knew what this see the future was all about. Gentlemen, set your hype trains to chew. And so, the player base waited through an entire agonizing week to see what the big event was. No excuses this time. If you were upset you missed the strange power or the falling rocks, you now had a timer to be online for even if it was stupid o'clock in the morning. We've all suffered for RuneScape, it wasn't a big ask. A week turned to a day, and with 24 hours remaining, the in-game chat box counted down the hours. With the time closing in on zero, players flocked to the cities to see the big event. So far, we'd seen floaty red mists and rocks from the sky. What could it be this time? Zero. Four wizards teleport down from the sky. Together they siphon power from a source between them which explodes into a portal. They try their best to control it, but it implodes and turns into a magic sphere. It tries to escape, but the wizards fight to keep it under control, and just barely keeps it in check until it disappears. A job well done, and a day saved. The wizards teleport away, and like that, it's over. Needless to say, this was a huge upgrade from what we'd seen before. From small events to animations that lasted for only a few seconds, we now had a full exciting scene played out for everyone to see, and no one had the right to complain if they missed it. Surely, Jagex had finally made the perfect teaser. Anyway, the players hated it. That was it. We waited a week for this. We pay. We say. And we say this sucks. Underwhelmed by the payoff for the week-long timer, riots formed across all the different game worlds. They didn't know what to expect, but their expectations had been high. And so, what had once been a source of some of the biggest hype the community had seen was now a source of scorn. The teaser had backfired. Well, congratulations. You tried to please everyone and now they all hate you. If only there was some sort of saying about pleasing all the people all the time. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, back on the shelf it goes. Now, come on. You need to get back to work on that new quest. Guthix isn't going to kill himself. Well, it'd be a waste to do away with it completely, right? After the See the Future riots, Jagex abandoned the bigger teasers. Going back to the style of 2009, they built up to the world wakes by having a shadowy figure spawn at random times, as an inoffensive teaser for any eagle-eyed players. And then… nothing. For two years. In preparation for World Event 3, Tuska's face flashed on screen for all online players. While similar in the style to the strange power, it generated far less hype and interest than the famous event. An interesting attempt at this style of teaser also took place in 2015 where, as a build-up to Lord of Vampirium, the residents of Berg the Rot started to disappear one by one, a new one vanishing every day. While a really cool idea in theory, it didn't generate much attention beyond a Reddit thread on the fifth day. It probably didn't help that Berg the Rot isn't exactly the most popular place in the game. With another year and a half of no events, Jagex tried to recreate the strange power in December 2016, with every player being lifted into the air and glowing green as a teaser for Sliske's endgame. The fact that if someone mentions the strange power, no one asks which one, should be a good indicator of how memorable this one was. 
Unfortunately, the interest towards unannounced phenomena has waned significantly over the years. Whether it's due to burnout after CD Future, on both Jagex and the player's side, or because we usually know what the teaser is for, is hard to say. Maybe it's something else entirely. Speaking of something else entirely, there's one last tale I want to bring up. It's the 1st of May 2015. Players roaming Prithinus with the audio on can hear something quite odd. This creepy mystery stirred up some attention on the RuneScape Reddit, with threads discussing and gathering evidence about the mysterious laughing girl. Both Mod Raven and Mod Deg posted some cryptic tweets about the situation, but nothing that actually helped find any answers. Some players agonized over finding a way to spark a reaction from the ghost. Rings of visibility? Ghost speak amulets? Wearing bedsheets? It wasn't until a few years later that Mod Raven came forward with the truth. Turns out the whole thing had just been a bug. Just goes to show that sometimes the best mysteries are the ones that don't even exist. Thank you all so much for watching this little snippet of history into the various community hunts from over the years. I think the community has a large say in how Jagex chooses to release content to the game, and the unannounced phenomena are a great example of just that. I do hope that we'll get to see more of them in the future and the idea hasn't been permanently shelved. Even if there is another event just around the corner, it's not like they're going to tell us. For now, my name is Will Missit and I'll see you around next time.